بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما دي مس السلام it is so nice to see you again والله after almost a year it is so nice to be back what a beautiful uh, place uh, I told my wife what we call Brisbane uh, home away from home and it's true والله it felt like home and it's, uh, it's to be honest with you it is uh, my wife is calling and uh, you know uh, we call wives and we have to answer she's downstairs Yes, uh, uh, I'm up here. Do you not have the, uh, the um, speaking room? Is it? You got nothing you can't hear. All right, let me talk to the, uh, the people in charge. <laughs> you can't hear anything. Oh, okay. All right, um, they're going to, it's technical, so I'll, I'll speak with the child. Can I come down? <laughs> There's a lot of brothers out here. We can't make it. Uh, you know what? Let me just defer you to the manager. <laughs> you go <laughs> They're thinking, what else can we do? So I don't know if they can hear me. They can't hear me downstairs. Okay. Maybe I can go this way. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullah. How is that? Can you hear me now? Uh, it, it might be a bit of a challenge. There's a lot of fun time. Bismillah. 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 When the brothers were asking, you know, what topic would you like to talk about it? And I picked this one because it addresses a lot of things. The current issues, life, hereafter. The door is just a bit of a Yes. Just ask the brothers just to move. Okay. No problems. Uh, brothers, if I can ask the, the brothers on the right to stand up, please, from this side. To come to this side. for your patience and understanding. We're not starting a revolution. This is not a coup. We're not taking over. <laughs> it's just a combination. And it's very nice of you for understanding and your patience and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Otherwise, I go home, I hear all about it. It's a very long flight back to Canada. You understand? I see you pain. Can you imagine you know exactly what I'm talking about? If not, then I can't help you. <laughs> We need to talk because I need to get you off the market because Brother Abed is right there. Now I need to get him off the market then. So we're going to auction this boy off. Inshallah, as I said, 100% halal meat. We're going to get some We had a really good uh, camp, Inshallah, from Soul Seeds. It was really nice three days with the youth. It was nice gloves off. It was a beautiful experience, Inshallah. My man right here, Inshallah, look, don't do it, don't do it, shit, don't put me on the. <laughs> He's a poet. This guy is amazing, mashallah. So we had a lot of fun, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you for the youth and supporting them. It's very nice. I hear a lot of good things. I see a lot of good things happening in the masjid. The extension, mashallah. May Allah make it easy for you and bless you, inshallah. I'm sending two, two imams your way, and inshallah, one of them will be doing it. So the, the promised land uh, is, it is, it is what it is. The title actually speaks for itself. So I'm going to talk about the promise and the land and the dispute about this life and hereafter, what it really means to us. And we're going to talk about some lessons learned from the past to a better future. It's very simple indeed. So what you see in front of you and what you see on your screen and what you see in the world is a, is a revolutionary. To be honest with you, I've never thought that I would hear the words. I've never thought that South Africa, so, did I say South Africa? Anybody from South Africa here? I'm just kidding. I know everybody from South Africa. <laughs> South Africa made us so proud. Wallahi, it's not because I'm here in Brisbane and most of the big brothers are from South Africa. But my God, man, who would have thought the students of the one that paid the price big time are now taking Israel to court? 
Who would have thought? What about the Arab? The Arabs, uh, you know, will, will not just go there because uh, I'm an Arab and I'm like, you know, I'm so disappointed. We won't do much politics, but we'll talk about it, inshallah. Sheikh, I'll tell you what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about us. Fair enough. A Prophet sallallahu There is a people from my ummah. They will qaimun al They will still hold on to the truth. That's it. So let me talk about that. It was part of it, but I brought it up a little bit for it. So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says there's a group of people that from my ummah, they will be steadfast on what's right, holding on to the truth, fighting for the truth. They will not be harmed from those who let them down and those who oppose them. Does that say enough about the Arab Sheikh? Exactly. So our Prophet ﷺ over 1400 years ago told us that the Arabs, so-called Arabs, Muslims, will oppose those fi'a, those people. And this one narration of the hadith says, حول المسجد الأقصى He said they will be coming around the Masjid Al-Aqsa. They will be fought because they say the truth. They will be let down. And here's the first lesson learned. We do not depend on people. We do not depend on the creation. We depend on the creator. Because if you put your trust in the creation, you will be let down. And that's why Prophet Muhammad says, they will let you down. They will not be harmed by those who let them down. And my God, man, I have seen enough, heard enough. And I said, you know what? I don't have to worry about it anymore because our Prophet told us this is what's going to happen over 1400 years ago. He's not condoning it, he's telling you that that's what's going to happen. But guess what? The miracles of what happened in Gaza, not because of my wife is from Gaza, I have to plug that in, Yanni, just to make sure I get brownie points. You know the joke. Wallahi, Sheikh, they taught us the lessons. They taught Muslims the lesson. Not even mentioning non-Muslims became Muslims, embraced Islam because of what's going on in Gaza. They can't understand how could a, a man kiss the eye of his grandchild, granddaughter. I don't know if you've seen it on them. He kissed the eye of the de deceased granddaughter, hugged her and rubbed his beard on top of her head as if he was reliving the time that they used to have this beautiful bond together. A mother taking her son dead and making a zaruta. Congratulations, he's a martyr. They don't get it. Because they don't understand that death to us does not mean death. It's just a phase of life that you will not die. Your spirit will never die. And that's why I'm telling you, they will be embracing Islam the proper manner, not the cultural or hand-me-down Islam. They cannot fight an army that is not afraid of death. They cannot fight an army of those who actually fear none but Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah. They cannot fight an army when Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah. Da'lamuna innahum ya'lamuna kama ta'lamun. Wa tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjoon. Allah is telling you, yes, you're going through difficulties, they go through difficulties like you do. But what you're asking for is not what they're asking for. We're asking for martyrdom. We're asking for Jannah, eternal pleasure. They're asking for life. Haya, Allah mentioned that by the way. Not Alif Lam, Haya, that means any Haya. Just give me any type of Haya, but I don't want to die. Have you seen the soldier that is covering himself with a blanket against bullets? They're so afraid. They're crying. You understand? They're celebrating when they leave Gaza. Have you not seen them? They're celebrating and then saying, we made it out of there alive. There's a huge difference, brothers and sisters. So when we talk about the promised land, to them is different than ours. Promised land for them is here. Promised land for us is over there, where we belong. There's a huge difference. And that's what this topic is all about. So the promise is there, the land is there, but it's huge difference. The promise we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al haqqa It's the truth. The promise they have is none except falsified records written by a man fortifying it. 
The promise given to us by Allah subhanahu wa jalla bi ula is the truth of our 1400 years ago, documented that we'll go back to Masjid Aqsa free so we can pray there together when it's free. Say Ameen. Wallahi, I have that feeling. I asked Allah subhanahu wa jalla bi ula, Ya qurra a'yununa qabla al mawt. That was my dream to see something that gives you hope. After all these years, you've seen the oppression, the double standard, the hypocrisy of the world. I'm not going to talk about that because it's very obvious. But Alhamdulillah, you've seen something that made you proud. Who would have thought? Not even an army. Not even an army. This is a movement. Not even an army. That's given the army that said, La yuqhar. You know what that means? It's a facade. It's a repetition that they were trying to do. It's a fear factor. They're telling that the Israeli army, and I don't say the IDF, it's IOF. Because D stands for defense, but it's occupy, occupier, it's not a defense. They said that their, this uh, army, لا يقهر, which means it's not beatable, it's unbeatable. And they know now that that's just a facade, it's just a fear factor. You know what the STI stands for? STI stands for Strategic Defense Initiative. That's what they do. It's a fear factor. They make you say, you know what, don't mess with us because we're too powerful. And they show you on the screen, we will pinpoint this and we'll get you that and we'll get this. Well, we're not afraid, man. We're still here. So that's the huge difference where Allah subhanahu wa jalla says, you will go back to the Masjid al Aqsa. But first, you have to pay the price. So, second lesson learned. First lesson was. Don't depend on the creation of Allah, but depend upon Allah. Depend on Allah. Depend on the Creator. Second lesson learned is don't leave your post. And we learned that from Uhud. The Battle of Uhud is very clear. The number one lesson learned among others was Islam will never lose. Muslims will win or lose according to what they do. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Give the people on the mount, the archers, he says, do not leave your post, no matter what you do. If you see us beaten, don't come and help us. If you see him win us, don't come celebrate with us. Even if they see corpse and the birds are coming to gobble us up, don't come and aid us. Three times he repeated very clear instructions. 50 archers held Khalid Mulunid, radiallahu anh, platoon away, not to come from behind to attack Muslims. However, there is a human factor to this. The whims and desires. So you have to ask yourself, what do you want more? What leads you? Do you take your whims and desires to be your God? Of course, with a small g. Do you follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa jalla Do you follow the command of Rasulullah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Or do you say no, this is a better house, a better car, a better job, a better looking wife No matter how halal or haram, it doesn't matter Did it follow the commands of Allah, the sunnah of Rasulullah, it doesn't matter And that's what you have to ask yourself So some of the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Jubayr radiallahu anhu from the Ansar out of the 50 people, 10 stayed with him. He's telling them, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi says, stay here, says that was the time of the, uh, the war, it's over now. That's not the case. This even if that was over, even don't, don't leave your post. So my job is to tell you, don't leave your post. If you're working in da'wah, brothers and sisters, don't leave your post. Don't be afraid. Don't leave your post. Say the truth. I was shut down three times on my social media. So what? It's not the end of the world. But you say the truth. They're losing the propaganda war. They know it too. That's why they're making it difficult for us when we say the truth. So live like a man. And I was talking to the brothers last night about the difference between a man and a male. Huge difference. Allah talks about men in the Quran. Not the poor, not males. Fiha rijal. They're truthful what they promised Allah with. Understanding that's a huge difference. We talked about Anas ibn Nadr, radiallahu anhu arda. Abu Dujana, radiallahu anhu arda. Anas ibn Nadr made a hole. And to make sure that he does not run away from the army when the Muslim army is retreating, 
He went through it and he had so many wounds, he could only be identified by his own sister, by the teeth. That's it. That was it. Abu Dujana had 83 arrows in his back. He looked like a porcupine because he covered Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the hole that Ibn Abi Qama'a that he healed for him, dug for him. This is men. That's the truth. Allah says, Fiha Rijal. So you understand what this is all about. So live like a man. Don't leave your post if you're walking in da'wah. Don't sell out. And that's why when the, when the young asks this person of Allah, Shaykh, who do we ask? Who do we listen to? I say, listen to the mashayikh that are in prison. These are the mashayikh you listen to. The one that are in prison. These are the ones that did not sell their deen for somebody else in dunya. They're not the one giving you fatwa according to your own whims and desires, according to those who rule you and give you the paycheck. This is the one you listen to. When they die with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleased with them. Not the hypocrites. So, fiha rijal. Men. So, of course, Khalid Murid came and bulldozed them and you know the rest. Even Abu Hudayfa, Yaman. Hudayfa al-Yaman. He said, Abi, Abi, Allah. He saw Muslims killing his own father because they were confused. So the number one is Islam will never lose. Muslims will win or lose according to the teaching of Islam. And we lost in Uhud, even though Hamra al Asad was a continuation, but in Uhud we lost because. That is the best lesson learned in the battle. Because if we won in Uhud by disobeying the command of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it would have been a black dot in the history of Islam. We will come 1400 years later, we will say the Sahaba, Radwanullah Alayhi Majma'een, human beings, human nature, disobeyed the command of Rasulullah and they still won the battle. No. It's the biggest lesson. If you disobey the command, you will lose. If you obey the command, you will win in both the books. So don't lose your post and don't come off your post. Don't leave your post, brothers. If you're working in da'wah, mashayikh, or du'a, don't leave your post. Number two, if you're using your social media, don't lose your post, man. Don't leave your post. Don't be afraid. Say the truth. They hear you. People are changing. Heart and minds are changing around the world. Even in America, you won't believe it, but they're going on strike, hunger strike in the White House. Who would have thought? Jews in the White House are making a demonstration. Not in my name. Of course, you understand there's a huge difference between Judaism and Zionism. Huge difference. You understand? We're not after that. We're after justice. We're not after anyone in particular. As a matter of fact, some of the Jews are supporting us because they know that. They know the truth. So we cannot generalize. Number three, if you're supporting them financially, don't leave your post. Don't say I give one shaykh, khalas. Keep giving, keep supporting. Allah will give you much more. Don't leave your post. If you're doing demonstrations, don't leave your post. They hear you. Your voices are heard by our brothers and sisters out there on their own. Wallahi, they support them that demonstration supports them more than you think so don't leave your post and don't give up on demonstrations as long as it's legal and lawful and don't do anything stupid that puts us in trouble if you're making dua for them don't leave your post don't say da'out wa da'out i made dua i made dua nothing is coming out don't leave your post that's the second lesson learned third second learned Second is it, the dua of that, of the post. The third one is Surah Al-Kahf. It has a lot to do with it, brothers. I taught a course about Surah Al-Kahf and there's a lot of gems in there. It's a timeline of the whole Ummah Shaykh. How Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala teaches you about three words in Surah Al-Kahf that tells you the timeline of the Ummah. How the young, the youth, when they came in, uh, we came in as Muslims hiding in Dar al Arqam, in the Arqam, praying in silence. By the way, that's why you play silence. 
in the Dhuhr and Asr. Did you know that? That's the reason you play in silence in Dhuhr and Asr. Because they pray in silence in Dhuhr and Asr because people are out in the marketplace. You pray Jahr in Fajr, Maghrib, and Isha because they went to sleep so they can afford to raise their voices a little bit more. In Dar al That's the Sunnah. So now you understand what this was all about. So in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you in Surah al kahf in three words in the beginning when the youth were running away from a tyrant ruler. It says, وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ the word well, يتلطف, that means if you're dealing with a tyrant ruler, be gentle. Don't make waves. Don't make harm. More harm than good. Our Prophet وسلم, did not take an axe and hack the idols when first the greed of Islam. Even though he knew it was haram. But when did he do it, brothers and sisters? When did he do it? First chocolate. I know you don't work for free. The man raised his hand right away. Go ahead, my man. You're Abdullah, right, Sheikh? I remember you, son. Good for you, mashallah. So proud of this guy. How old are you? Twelve? Are you married yet, man? Twelve. Uh, last year I came here, you were eleven, you're not married. What's up with that dude? Let me talk to your parents, Andy. Come on. The guy is smart, he's ready. Here you go, with Abdullah. Yeah, I see you loud. I don't want any lawsuits here, brother. Brothers, look at me. Come on, man. We don't want we want to keep this message yet. Hi! Oh, good for you, man. MashaAllah. He's right. So the idea about it, Waliyat Allah, is be gentle. He says, then the second one, when they're equal, they're not equal here. When the second one was uh, the Jannatan, uh, the two, the owners of the gardens, they're equal. So what it says, you have it. Now you're debating, discussion. We can talk. Or equal, yes. Give da'wah that way. But when Dhul Qarnayn, he has the power, the means, and everything else, the army, the knowledge. What did he say? Bi Get it? Three words in Surah Al Kahf tells you the story and the storyline of the Ummah. How we came into a cave and came out of a cave and back into another cave. You know what that means? A cave, which is the womb of your mother, and came out of the cave in this dunya, but you're going back into another cave, which is your grave, and you're coming back into it. But every time you come out, it's much better, much bigger. Lived in a very small womb of the mother. You came out from a very small area, but when you came out, it's massive, this world. But you go back into another womb, which is your grave, but when you come out, come out to the vastness of Jannah. Allahu Akbar, Ya Sheikh. Mustaqarr wa mustawda. Allah mentioned two words. Mustaqarr wa mustawda. The back of your father, the chest of your mother. Mustaqarr wa mustawda. Is your grave and coming back? Second womb, Shaykh. In Surah Al Kahf, you also learn about the three. But listen carefully. When Al Khadr alayhi salam was teaching Musa alayhi salam. So don't get off your high horse. Don't tell me I learned. You didn't learn a thing, Shaykh. Wallahi, as soon as you say, I know that you don't know. I can tell you right now. <laughs> we talked about knowledge last a couple of days ago with Brother Imran, may Allah bless him, with the new Muslims. Now, Al Khadr is teaching Musa uh, something. First, he sees a person that helps you with a with a boat. It's, and then you make a, a you poke a hole. What kind of <laughs> What kind of hospitality is that? But was that good or bad? What do you think, brothers? I mean, no candy on this one is easy, but I'm just trying to tell you. Obviously, it was supposed to be bad. This is bad. How do you poke my uh, the hole in my uh, uh, in my ship that I I hosted on you and I took you over? But it was good. But did we understand it in the beginning? We could not understand in the beginning, but it was it turned out to be good. That's exactly how you look at Gaza. I don't get it, man. What's going on? We don't get it yet, but you will see what's coming in the future is much better than you think. You, they plot and Allah plots and Allah is the best of potters. You may think something is bad for you, but it's actually good for you. What about the one that uh, 
Jidal, what about the one that killed his own, the, 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 the child? Does that make any sense to you? The people, could you go into a village and they don't even host on you. And you still build a, you erect a wall, and they belong to two orphans. It doesn't make sense to you that I help those who didn't help me. It doesn't make sense. But was it good? Of course it was good. Kill a child, an innocent child, you think that this is amazing, that's horrible. But was it good or bad? It was good. It would have been a horrible child and make a fitna for their righteous parents. And Allah granted them much better, a hafid, a one learned, a righteous child. So you have to think positive no matter what. You learn that from Surah Al-Kahfi, Ya Shaykh. So you'll understand what happens in Gaza is a reflection of the Ummah. Those who debate, those who quarrel, and those who believe. Those who doubt, those who are firm. It's all about faith. When did we ever have more in the army when we ever fought? When? In the history of Islam. When we had more, we didn't have any. Only Hunayn. Yawma Hunayn, id a'jabatkum kathratukum. And Hunayn was about, even Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda. Was a lan nughla bil yawm min qillah. We will not be defeated today because of numbers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a lesson, even Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda. Wa ala sahaba dajma'in, the best man that was ever created after prophets and messengers. He says, بَلَغَتُ الْقُلُوبِ الْحَنَاجِرِ the hearts were at their throat. They couldn't. They couldn't. And people say, Mata Nasrullah. Allah answers, Ala inna Nasrullah qareeb. When is the victory of Allah? He says, Qareeb. Soon. Time doesn't pertain to you, Shaykh. It's when Allah sees fit and is better and what's best. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْعَلَوْنِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ مَشْرُوطِ do not waver. Do not dishearten. Do not get weak. You are superior if you know. But if only you believe. You understand? There's a huge difference. I'm going to take a segue from this one, inshallah. When our martyrs, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, when they die with a smile on their face, do not think those who were martyred for the sake of Allah are deceased. You think they're deceased, but no shaykh. You see with different vision. No. You see they different they, they see with the heart. You see there's a basar wal basira. You understand the difference? Basar, basira. You can see with both, but when you see with this earthly link, you see with this a heavenly link. You understand? So look at the difference, Shaykh. The difference between a promised land and a promised land. A promised land and made it material. The new Middle East they're after. They're all about money when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes them on judgment day in Surah Al-Haqqa. <laughs> Allah is telling you that that's what the people are fighting for. This whole world is fighting for two things Allah is telling you about. Money and power. Allah says money will not help you on judgment day. Your power will not come in your aid on judgment day. Tell me how many pharaohs do we have? And how many Moses do we have? And tell me where Pharaoh is now. He lived so long. Powerful, he never gets sick by the way. Didn't he say, Ana Rabbukum al -a'la? And you bow down to say, Subhana Rabbi al -a'la. Huge difference. He's in the lowest rank in the hellfire, and inshallah, we will be in the highest rank in the heaven. Say, I mean, that's the huge difference. How many pharaohs do we have? We have enough pharaohs in the Ummah, Shaykh. But we also have Moses, your choice now. You take the path of Pharaoh or you take the path of Musa alayhi salam. And that's why Allah says, don't go after what people are fighting for. It's just about money and wealth and that power that they're after and they're 
making sure they're redrawing the whole world to make sure that they're doing whatever they're doing. Uh, everybody's right now is East and West. That's basically what it is. You know, uh, America on one side and Europe, and you have uh, China and, uh, and Russia on the other side, plus uh, North Korea. I mean, listen, I'm not, uh, you know, they're both horrible. <laughs> but right now we're saying less of both evils right now. Akhaf al rain you understand? You take this side, we'll take this side. You mess with us, we'll take France out of Africa, we'll put Russia back in. All right, you, you, I will do Taiwan for uh, their barter system, man. And why do you think that is? Because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us over 1400 years ago, Our Prophet said that nations will come and gobble you up. Like the people are hungry. You know Ramadan? You know Ramadan is coming around soon. So I, I talked about this before. Please do moon sighting, not moon fighting. Thank you. I love you guys. Just, remember Bani Quraida, right? Remember Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you know, <laughs> I talk about this all the time. Sahaba different. Some of them prayed the Asr before, some of them prayed the Asr after. And the Prophet says, both are good. Yes? So both are good, please. At least don't differ in the masjid. I beg you. Wallahi. Follow your lead, follow your leader, follow your imam, follow your, your amir. You can fight outside, but not inside. As the man of the scholar said, you can fake it, man. Fake it, but don't differentiate. You understand? Don't make a fitna inside the masjid, please. Uh, by the way, the, the directors did not tell me to say this uh, because they don't want you with headache later, so I'm just saying this because I love you. Okay. So when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, nations will come, all these banners, you understand? The allies, all of that stuff, they will come and he says he will, they will gobble you up. As if the people come and eat from the qasa, from the, when they have the... By the way, last night, his brother was here, here. May Allah bless him, Shaykh. He bought, we went to this uh, uh, sunshine. Turkish place, MashaAllah, <laughs> and tonight is Dr. Rehab here, okay, he said he won't make it, he's going to sleep because it was beautiful biryani, his wife, the doc, how you doing doc, are they, oh hey, the power to the sisters, yeah, just came from serious biryani, and that's my fitna, you understand, I'm brown from the inside, you tell me, talk me about biryani, I'm sold, like I know, <laughs> MashaAllah, so, he says, no, is it because we're few in numbers? Is it but antum kabir You are plenty in numbers. We're almost two billion Muslims in the world, Chief. Two billion Muslims in the world. And Prophet Muhammad says, No, you're not in few in numbers. You're plenty in numbers, but like the foam of the ocean. How much weight does the foam of the ocean carry? Nothing. And he says, Allah yanzah maynukum min kulubikum khawf li a'daikum. Allah, Prophet says, Allah will take away the fear out of your enemies from the heart. Even though Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Nusirtu bil ru'ah masirat shah. He says, when the army of Muslims took off one month away, people were afraid because we believed. Allah threw the, the fear in our enemy's heart. Now, Allah took that away from them. Muslims blood is cheap they won't do much I'm not gonna go into why and all of that stuff this is not our topic for this point but you understand so he says why are we weak at the time O Messenger of Allah he says this ummah this nation will be plagued by something called wahan so he says what is wahan he says hukbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut now you'll understand so the symptoms the Rx is here Analysis of the doc is given. Yes? He's telling you the remedy is, the symptoms are, wahan. What is wahan? He says, we love dunya, we love life too much, and we're afraid of death. He says, that's the illness of the ummah at the time. Where we're gonna differ. You understand that some people, go get Hamas, man. Go kill these guys. Because they're afraid for their own throne. You understand? They're actually cheering for them. We call these the Jews of the Arabs, with all due respect. So you'll know when Prophet Muhammad says they will not be harmed of those who differ with them, and they will not be harmed of those who let them down. But I don't understand how they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I saw my brothers and sisters dying of hunger. Dying of hunger. They're using the food of the animals to, to feed themselves. But look at the difference, brothers and sisters. 
they cut off the water and we give the water to, our, to the prisoners of war. They cut off the food, we give them food. The Ten Commandments of War, look at the beauty of Islam, and that's why people are embracing Islam, whether they like it or not. The Ten Commandments of War, given by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his successes after him. And you compare that to what the, the, the Israeli army is doing, the exact opposite. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his successes after him, when the army is going to fight, he says, do not kill a child. Do not kill a woman. Do not kill an old man. Do not kill an animal. Do not cut a tree down. Do not burn their homes. Do not pollute the water. Do not invade them at night. Asked why? He says, so you may not wake the nursing child and the mother. He says, they, you will find those who worship God in their own ways, leave them to worship God in their own ways. Fight only those who fight you. That's the Ten Commandments of War according to Islam. They do the exact opposite of that. They kill women, they kill children, they kill old men, they cut them down, they burn down their homes, they blow it away, they pollute the water, they cut down the water, they cut down the oil, they cut down the food, they cut down everything. Electricity, they, they bomb hospitals, everything against the, uh, the, 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 the world in front of them, blind. Everything against the like, international laws, everything. SubhanAllah, Shaykh. But here's my thing, Shaykh. You see, when they take down the buildings, it's just stones, you see? But they will not take down our spirits. Because it's just a worldly thing that goes down, but our hearts are linked to Allah, SubhanAllah. Yes. Now, let's go to the other side. The segue. Those are a promised land. What's the land, Shaykh? It's Jinnah. And it's a promise. See, the promise will not be fulfilled. They know it too. They're afraid. As a matter of fact, they've never seen that many losses in the history of Israel. Not just bodies, souls, how many people are actually gone to hospitals and can't keep it up, how many people actually are now disabled, they cannot come back. Their commerce has gone down, their commerce has gone down, the reverse migration by millions are leaving. So they know what? Alhamdulillah, we won whether they like it or not. They know that. They said this war was won on October 7th. Whatever you do, you will never win this war. They already said that the experts, the military experts are telling them that. But what we are after, Shaykh, is something totally different. We're after the promised land. We're after Jannah. You know Abu Ubaidah, may Allah bless him, protect him. He's famous now. I, I saw a cafe, I can't remember what country, this is a cafe I'm for <laughs> And they have this picture in it. I can't remember what country they have it in. Good food. Yeah. Now, the promised land for us is different than promised land for them because they want to get, uh, by the way, the, you know the promised land, you know the, that's the flag, you understand? You know the, the, the two, you know, you know what the two blue lines are in the Israeli flag? You know what that is? Anybody knows? All right. I know, you don't work cheap. I get it. Okay, if you tell me what the, oh, it's gold, not silver. Sorry, Abdullah. If you tell me what the two blue lines in that Israeli flag, you will get this one. Shaykh. The Jordan River and the sea. Right, okay, so the Nile and the Euphrates. Good for you, Shaykh. Oh, sorry. I can do better outside of the Nile. Mashallah, there you go. So they want Palestine. You understand? It's very obvious, very obvious, yes? The deal of the century is very obvious. You, you take him out to Sinai, you take him out to Jordan, you take him out somewhere else, but we want this land, it's ours. Yes? And of course, they want, uh, you know, Lebanon, that's what they're poking. They want some of Jordan. They, want, they actually said Mecca and Medina, it's on their list. <laughs> now, okay, listen. Al Aqsa, we're fighting for. The whole Ummah is fighting for Al Aqsa. But do you think you can come, come close to Mecca and Medina and will leave you? Dude, everybody here is going to leave whatever it is behind and they're going to go defend Mecca and Medina. You understand? 
They don't get it. So that's the promised land. Khaybar Khaybar Ya Yahud, yes, you know that? Khaybar, they're afraid, they want it back. Nice cry. Jaysh Muhammad Sawfa Yahud, inshaAllah. Say Ameen, inshaAllah. And it's back, alhamdulillah. Kim min fiha qaleela. There's a few numbers. Ghalabat. Beaten a lot by the mercy of Allah and the way it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we go to the other side, you see, what do you see? You see, Shaykh, five phases in life. One, spirits in the back of our father Adam. Two, the womb. Three, this world here, Teklufa. Four, Barzakh, rape. Fifth, resurrection. So this is the five phases that we go through. So when you realize that, you know that when your body dies, only your body dies, your spirit doesn't die. Your spirit goes on. And that's what this is all about. As a matter of fact, the hadith says, if you die for the sake of Allah here, your soul will be in a bird that is green in the heavens. Alive. Roaming. You understand? In heaven. That's what they see. They don't see this world here. Our brothers, those who are fighting for Palestine, for Gaza, for Al-Aqsa, because you understand that those uh, red cows that they wanted to slaughter to take the Aqsa. You understand? This was whole, that was the whole thing is all about. You wanted to demolish the Aqsa, build their temple on it. That's it, it's really that simple. It's a whole documentary about it. But the promised land, Ya Sheikh, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you defend your honor, it's a shaheed. You defend your land, it's a shaheed. That's what they're doing. You defend your property, your shaheed. You know why we're so strong? Because it's sahib al-haq sawtu alid. If you if you follow, if you fight for the truth, you have a very loud voice, strong. But they bring people from everywhere else. They just, I'll give you the citizenship, I'll give you a job, and that's it. This is your home. It's not your home. They know that. That's the huge difference. So when we have this conflict, if you want to go with that, but a person has an F-16 and the other one has a, uh, you know, has a rock. It's not a gun. Yeah. When they want to call it, they want to call it. You understand. But the huge difference is, we have our eyes on the prize. We know Allah promises that we'll go back and take the Masjid Aqsa again. Inshallah. In time. But be patient. Persevere. Never give up and never surrender. So when you think about this Jannah, why are they holding up too much shit? Because you see, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَّعُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَ مَسِيدٍ And that's what we'll finish with, inshallah. Our promised land. Before I take you there, I'm going to take you to Imam Salaam Al-Hajj. I remember when I was young, when I attended one of his uh, lectures, he says, be a salmon. Be a salmon. I talked to the youth on this one when it comes to the animal kingdom in the khutbah. <laughs> when we ponder and reflect on the creation of Allah. But when he said, be a salmon, he says, what do you know what that means? When they spawn in a certain area and they go out, the rest of the life, before they die, they come back to where they spawn. They want to go home, even though it's upstream. Difficult. There's a bear waiting for you once they gobble you up. Fitan, tests, your enemies. But you're so strong that you want to go back home. Where's home? Jannah. Why is it so much, Shaykh? Because Allah says, Darul Qarar. Darul Qarar. You know, when my wife was talking, I was talking today, she says, so many of her family died in Gaza. You know, her, her grandma died today, actually. Inna lillahi wa may Allah mercy upon you. So you know, it's sad. But he said, she's not dead. The body is dead, the spirit is not, the soul. So that's when we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We commit to that. We come from Allah, and we come back, one thing, we return. But when we see the difference, Shaykh, when there's no taxes in Jannah, the rents are very good in Jannah. <laughs> the real estate value, you can't get any better than that. You will never die again. You will never get sick again. 
You will never be sad again. You will not go old. You will not lose your hair. You will not have a biryani belly. You can eat as much chocolate as you want, sisters. You don't have to work out. Gravity will not take place. You will look like Prophet Yusuf <laughs> alayhi salam. 33 years old, eternally. Isn't that amazing, Shaykh? Who is your neighbor? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. You will not eat out of hunger, but pleasure. You will not drink out of thirst, but pleasure. You will not go to the bathroom after you eat and drink because it evaporates like a beautiful mosque. Every Friday, as I mentioned last time, there is a shopping mall. Hey, hey, I'm just reminding you, there's a shopping mall. <laughs> Don't worry about it, your credit card can stay with you. Don't worry about it, it's cool. Every time Friday comes, they go to a shopping mall, they get what they want. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And when they come back, they look more beautiful. You believe it? There's a tree for you, Ukhti. This tree, Tuba al Murba. This tree, Tuba, a hundred years, a horse will not get to it to the end of it. The trunk is made of gold. The fruit of that tree are beautiful dresses. I'm talking their language now, you understand? I'm talking gold. Bling bling, kiching, yeah, the trunk of the tree is made of gold, girl. You don't want to, you don't have to, an ounce of gold, no. A trunk of a tree is made of gold. The dress you will wear, you don't have to change. It will change on you. The color will change on the hour and every color you will never see again. No Johnny Versace, Giorgio Armani or any Christian Dior will ever be able to design that. How much would you pay for that dress? Allahu Akbar. Isn't that amazing? We get the whole, did I say that? Did I say that? Oh, it slipped out. I said, almost said the uh, <laughs> poor name. But that's okay. I said, it's going to be a long flight back anyway. So I might as well just talk about it. Yeah, Allah speaks your language for this. Yes, you know what Allah says? Anything you wish for, you will get. Young brothers, tell me your wish, man. But Abdullah, tell me what you wish for, man. PS5? No? Tell me, tell me, brother, the young brothers, some of the young brothers. What, if I tell you, go ahead, man. What do you want? What's your wish? Which one? No, uh, Which one? What is it? Get into a university. Get into university? Okay, uh, are you saying, is your father nearby? Is that what you want him to hear? <laughs> Good for you, son. No, give me, be real. Come on, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me, tell me the good news. I said, gloves off, man. That's my style. Tell me what's your wildest dream, your wildest fancy. The young in the audience. Go ahead, man. All right. Everybody in the audience, because the young apparently is very content here. Brisbane is very conservative. <laughs> Sisters, go ahead. Tell me your wildest dreams. What do you want? Everything. See that? Now we're talking. Allah says, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ بِهَا Anything you wish for, you will get. But he says, And we have more. What is more? To being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, There's nothing better than that. Ya salam. Remember, brothers, when you were young, when you had the six pack? We have a one pack now. It's just, you know, it's solid. It's still solid, but it's just one. It's no six right here. I can tell you that. <laughs> and if you eat too much food of falafel, you feel awful. I'm just saying. I, I, I like other things than Brianna doing. No, yeah, I remember, you know, the noise you make when you stand up, the noise you make when you get up and sit down? Gone. You know the things you can't see without now? Gone. The hearing aid? Gone. Yes. You can climb the mountain and cool them. <laughs> I went to this camp and these guys I said, let's go for a walk. So you go hike. I'll go to no problem. And it's a mountain I have to climb. What the? <laughs> I ain't signed up for this. <laughs> And you know, Sheikh, you gotta be cool because you know you have to be a role model for the young. So, okay, I, can, I, can, <laughs> I gotta do this thing. <laughs> so I, I got up and go, I hate you guys. <laughs> but it was a beautiful sight when you get up there, man. So when you get up on the mountain, you see the horizon. The higher you go, the better the vision you see. That's what we're after. You see? That's what this Jannah is all about. The promised land for us, brothers and sisters. 
You have a palace made of brick of silver, brick of gold. Who are your servants? Angels. Can you imagine, Sheikh? Allahu Akbar. Sisters don't have to buy the cream, you know, the hundred dollar cream when they put it under? Because the lines and it brings in their life back. You, you know, when, the, when when you go to work, and I mean, I know I understand everybody works, you know, you go to work, you know, the sun is to call your wife before you come back, right? You know that, right? I'm on my way, honey. Why? Because you don't want to see her with, you know, but the sisters, you know, they take a shower, right? And they put their hair down like this, right? And they take this towel, you know the towel? And then you wrap it like this. And looks like a, the typhoon or into Jamaima or this Mag March Simpson or something. Is that good? <laughs> and right, and they put the cream thing, you know, that the, the mask, and either two lemon slices or tea bags, and then you go home. Are we lemon slices? They're trying to look young for you. Come on, man. You don't have to worry about that old thing. Allah says, "Kawaib atraba, uruban atraba, kawaib," meaning healthy. No uh, gravity effect. <laughs> Just read between the lines. Yeah. Trying to keep this a family show as much as possible. <laughs> Why? Atraba meaning everybody's the same age. Urub, Urub, and Urub. Urub is the one that gives you beautiful voices, beautiful songs, beautiful nasheed. Halal nasheed, yeah. You understand? No, no. This is for real. A beautiful. You know when you sing in the shower and your neighbor moves out? No, no. This is something totally different. <laughs> Ya Allah. This beautiful Sheikh. Who doesn't want to see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in Jannah? Who doesn't want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah? Who doesn't want to live eternally happy after? For real. Not just a fantasy story. That's the promise land that we're promised. Not the other side, the false promise. And that's what the promised land was all about. So hang in there. Remember the stories and remember the lessons learned and be optimistic because the victory is coming. Because it is a promise of Allah that we will pray in Al-Aqsa again, Ya Rabbi, free, Ameen. Now the lecture is officially over, but now I can listen to see if you have any questions, concerns. If not, then I'll be asking you questions. I know the girl is between the brothers and the sisters. Any questions about anything I said today? No? Great. I know you have to work tomorrow, so we'll just make a quick review about the questions, about what we talked about. Sisters, I said there are three lessons learned. Give me one of them. Go ahead, Lufi. Say it again. Good for you, Lufi. Bismillah, let me <laughs> Close, mashallah, good catch. All right, you put your trust in the creator and the creation. Brothers, give me the second lesson. I gave you three. Habibi. Don't leave your post. Don't leave your post. Good for you, man, mashallah. That's the hood, dude. This is the voice that we're wrestling, then they came to knowledge, mashallah. Yani. Don't mess with these guys because they're not the wrestling. Just an MMA and Muslim Association of uh, <laughs> Something. All right, third lesson, sisters. It's in Surah al kahf Remember? Yes. Right. So even with Musa, I actually didn't hear what you said, but you must be right. Yeah? Whatever sisters say, they're going to be right here. As I said, if you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Come on. She sounds very convincing. Because I remember the sister, she's very knowledgeable, mashallah, she's a seeker of knowledge, and I trust her. So. Remember the timeline of the Ummah? The three things that happened? We thought it was bad, but it's actually good. Right. Brothers, when we talk about the promise, our Prophet وسلم, said that you will be having an illness that this promise would be delayed. Remember the illness? Wahan, mashallah, who said the first? I heard it. Shaykh, good for you. Sisters, can you can you describe Wahan for me? What was Wahan? What's the illness of Wahan? Yes, my doc. Oh, the doc's spoken. She is an amazing cook, by the way. 
And there's her daughter is an amazing uh, baker. Yeah, the, the, the cake sheikh was a uh, was a date cake, halal date. In the sense. It was a date cake. Gold or gold? Gold. Oh, close, very close. All right, brothers. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about this fi'a stand up what is right they will not be harmed by two types of people can you tell me the two types of people yes my brother yes they will not be harmed by those who let them down disappoint them or those who against go against them good for you my man what's your name Taha. you know Taha actually means Taha. When you put your foot down. Most people think Taha is the name of Prophet but Taha is Taha. And Taha, ma anzalna alaykul Quran al Put your foot down because our Prophet used to actually go one up, one down. Yes? Because he used to do Qiyam al for not Niyam al This, this brothers? It's Qiyam al now. Come on here. Anyway, that's one opinion. Don't worry about it. If you think it's Quran, you, you enjoy, man. Enjoy yourself. All right, tie break. Are you ready? Tie break, you will get three. Three of these puppies right here. Okay. Let me think of something that is a bit true. <sighs> yes. No, that's easy. Because you have to earn it. You have to earn it. Okay, so remember the rules, right guys? From last year? Okay. Five break question. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. The, it, it's for, open for both brothers and sisters. The first hand is raised, I stop. I don't repeat the question or complete the question. You have to answer according to what you heard. So if you get it right, you get three chocolates and your team wins. If you get it wrong, the other team wins by default. As I said, your team members will hate you for life. <laughs> no pressure. Are you ready? Okay. Hybrid question is, what did Imam Sirajul Hajj mean when he says be a sam? Brother Abin had the Zan first. Do you believe it? Yeah. Sheikh, we're all counting on you, no pressure. I mean everybody's looking at you now. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Abin. Takbir! I can't believe it. Second row, second time in the row the brothers think the sisters. I can't believe it. I mean uh, you know, the sisters will we will never lose. Sisters, uh, you know, as Islam. Islam never loses. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Abu Yamin is proud. Good for you, man. There you go, son. There you go. Oops, la hawla. Sorry. Me all of this. Okay, so another one I was thinking about. What is the biggest lesson in the battle of Uhud? I'll give you three. Okay, no, no, he can't have it again. I'll give it to sister that. Brother Abu is like so close. <laughs> go ahead, Ufti. Don't leave your post. Don't leave your post. What else? You get one. Uh, wait, Allah, okay, what is the biggest lesson learned in the battle of the heart? Islam. Islam will always win. All right, Islam will always win. Islam never loses. Muslims win or lose according to the way. That's a, that's a mail board. I can tell you right now. Okay, very good. So, second one. I'm going to throw it over before giving. And the third. <laughs> oh, I get it. I see. I didn't see that. I thought it was this one line. Now I know. Okay. That's my excuse. I don't know if you can buy that or not. I'm just on a horrible floor. Other than that, brothers, it's time. Stand up. Sister, stand up. This is my favorite part. Stand up. Sir. I want you to think you're standing up in front of Allah on Judgment Day. It says, Ya Allah, I want to give Nusra to our brothers and sisters of Gaza. Yeah. So make dua for them, brothers and sisters. Because on that day, somebody will save a life will come and tell you Zakallah Khairim for saving my life. For just your dua, for your support, for your demonstration, for your post, for your financial support, for anything you do. So turn to the side and hug the brother next to you, inshallah. Sisters, hug the sister next to you. Says, I love you for the sake of Allah. Let us be together, unite this ummah, so we can be together in one, inshallah, and pray in Al-Aqsa together when it's free. Say, Amin.